Coming up on Sports Night, the Orange are out of wiggle room. With today's loss to the Wolfpack, the Orange have to win out to become bowl eligible. On the high school gridiron section, three finals are set. We'll show you the action and tell you which teams punch their ticket into the championship round. Plus, we'll also hit the ice as things get physical for the beast ends and the crunch. No fisticuffs here, though. We're lovers, not fighters. Welcome to Sports Night. And what is going on, everybody? I'm Eric Columbia. Welcome to Sports Night. Well, the Orange, they're home for the first time in three weeks, but today's contest at the Dome is nothing but a business trip. Don't make any bones about it. With four games left in the regular season, Syracuse needs three wins to become bowl eligible. Freshman quarterback A.J. Long making his first Dome start. Didn't do much most of the first half until the very end. Launching it for his cousin Jared West down the sideline, 30-yard gain. West had seven catches for Buck 61 later in the drive. Rolling out to his right, Long hits Ben Lewis on the corner out. Great catch for the 15-yard touch, capping off a 95-yard drive. SU trails by two at the half. Opening drive of the second half, Long takes off on the scramble, 10 yards for the first down, and on the very next play, Long. Going for that corner round again. This time he's hitting fellow freshman Steve Ishmael, making the adjustment for the score. Third time those two have connected for a touchdown this season. Orange have a 14-9 lead. Later in the third quarter, disaster strikes. Orange looking to pad the lead, but this one's going the other way. Intercepted by Farrell McKeever, and Long's not going to catch him. 82 yards all the way to the barn. Wolfpack retake the lead. As we fast forward to the fourth quarter, the Orange down three points in this one. Long, he's going to get turnover happy again. This time, <clears throat> fumbling the rock and coughing it up. This time recovered by Keaton Gibbs, and that leads to another NC State touchdown. Cuse not quitting, though. After recovering an onside kick, one last chance. This one is intercepted again. Two touchdowns, two interceptions for Long. Syracuse loses 24-17. Sports director Mark Larson was there and has more. Eric, the SU offense finally showing signs of life. That's the good news. They scored twice as many touchdowns in this game as they had in their last two games combined. But in the end, it's just another bitter pill to swallow for Syracuse. And after his first dome start, freshman quarterback A.J. Long was taking all the blame. I made mistakes down the stretch that I can't make if we want to win. I can't fumble the ball with four, sec with four minutes left. Uh, I got to give. I got to put more air on the last play of the game. I mean, there, there's too many mistakes that I'm making that cost us this game. We just needed one more big play, and I, mean, I, I definitely could do a better job of making that play. If someone else could have done a good job making a play. It was just tough. I mean, we we're getting close, but I mean, close doesn't win games. Uh, it's tough, you know. Whenever you lose a game that you really think you should win, you don't feel good. Um, I don't think. Us as a defense played that well. I mean, we didn't have any turnovers for our standards, at least. Remember that Monty Python show where the guy loses his arm, he uses his other arm, he loses his leg and leg, and he's still fighting. That's that's our kids right there. We're just running out of arms and legs. So, God love them. I love these kids, and uh, dog on it, came up short. And as they get ready for SU basketball behind me, the SU football team has a very easy math equation to consider. They have three games left. They have to win all three to be bowl eligible. It all starts right here next Saturday against Duke. At the Carrier Dome, I'm Mark Larson, Time Warner Cable News. Thanks, Mark. Over in Class B, undefeated and top-seeded Casanova clashing with 8-1 West Hill on the high school gridiron. Midway through the fourth quarter, Kaz clinging to a three-point lead. T.J. Connellan pads the advantage with his third touchdown of the game. Lakers up by 10. Back on the attack, here comes the clincher. With a minute left, minute and a half left, Keaton Ackerman goes 40 yards on the keeper. He also passed for two scores as well. Kaz ends the game on a 20-0 run, winning 34-17. They're going to the Dome for the third straight year, looking for a third straight section title. On the other B semifinal, another 9-0 squad taking on an 8-1 team, Homer against Oneida. Second quarter, Oneida at midfield. Rory McCarthy finds Travis Moyer, who takes it in for the 50-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion ties it at 14. And that was a score at the half. Opening possession of the third quarter, Homer retakes the lead. Alec Bush, the Toyota first and 10, 
Player of the Year puts on the burner. 65 yard score, 358 yards on the day, four touchdowns as well. Oneida, they would retie it though on the ensuing possession, but on the possession after that, the Trojans go ahead for good. Drew Cottrell connecting with Jaden Godivia in the end zone. Homer outscores Oneida 17 0 in the final quarter to win by 17. So we got a battle of unbeatens next week in the B final. Well, it's going to be time for a break right here on Sports Night, but when we come back, we have more high school gridiron action as there is two more bids to the sectional finals up for grabs. But first, we're going to have weather on the one. It's very important this time of year, folks. And welcome back to Sports Night, everybody. As promised, we have more high school football for you. This year's AA semifinals looking a little bit different. That's because for the first time since 2008, there's no CBA in them. But the top dog in this year's bracket, Henniger, trying to get back to the Dome after falling to Brothers last year. But first, the Black Knights have to get past five seed Auburn. The Maroons a very tough squad. Henniger up 8-0 in the second. Najee Everson. Strolls in from six yard out, two point conversion makes it 16 nothing. But here come the Maroons, ensuing drive. They're inside the Henniger five. Justin Valentino throws it up to Nasir Smith. Yes, sir, come down with it. Auburn down by just eight, but the Black Knight defense holds serve from there. Savon Smith sacks Valentino late in the fourth quarter, and they're going to be heading it to the dome for the second straight season. Henniger wins 22 to 8. Now they're going to get the winner of this one. Second seed Liverpool taking on three seed Baldwinsville. This one a defensive struggle. It was scoreless midway through the fourth quarter. Jadakus Scott scores the first points of the ball game right here as the Warriors take a 7-0 lead. The B is they're trying to answer on the ensuing drive because remember football the only sport where we say ensuing. Facing a fourth down without with about a minute left and they can't convert. Liverpool escapes with a 7-0 win. They're going to take on Henniger next week. Let's go to the pitch. Seton, or excuse me, Section 3 finals taking place. We got three scores for you. SV coming up with a big win over Beaver River 1-0. And then JD in both the girls and boys in Class A defeat Marcellus by scores of 2-0, 2-1, Congratulations to all the Section 3 winners today. Let's uh, quickly go to the Ice Binghamton and Syracuse, the I-81 rivalry in the AHL. There's a few teams on I-81. This is just one contingent of that rivalry. Syracuse Crunch goalie Kristers Golvitas, 25 saves on the night on 28 shots. He was solid. Andrew Hammond on the other end for the Ice for the Binghamton Senators. He was solid just not as solid as Christers. He had 28 saves on 34 shots. If you do the math, that makes Binghamton on the wrong end of this one, the Syracuse Crunch. They're gonna get the 6-3 win as things get physical at Veterans Memorial Arena. Let's go to Glens Falls. The Comets taking on the Flames. Utica had goals from Brandon DeFazio, Nicholas Jensen, and Peter Anderson, which gave them a 3-1 lead after one, which is good because they barely held on to a 5-4 win. Utica will now face Iowa on Sunday. It's poll question time now before we let you go. And with that Syracuse loss, we want to know how you think the Orange will fare next week against Duke. Will they win, barely lose like they did today, or get blown out like they have in a couple games in weeks past? If you remember, Coach Schaefer said they need a miracle for them to get these last three games. Maybe that miracle starts with Duke at the Dome one week from today. If they win out, they will become bowl eligible. If they don't, their season will end maybe a bit prematurely. All depends on your look of things. That's going to do it for another edition of Sports Night. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll give the answers to that poll question, which you can vote on our website, twcnews.com. Plus, if this is not... Uh, made your fix. If you still need more, go to our website and you'll have plenty more there. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. For everyone here at Time Warner Cable News, I'm Eric Columbia saying we'll see you tomorrow.